to another digressions, meditations, and reflections. Um, I'm Felipe Muñoz. I'm the transformational mindset coach at Empathic Practice, and as promised, every Saturday, I'm just going to put a little bit of my thoughts out there. Um, I really enjoy talking about uh, spirituality, talking about spiritual matters, talking about mindset, uh, talking about psychology, and all the this really subtle things that makes us humans. So these are very fun videos to put together. So today I want to talk about spirituality and religion. It's a very touchy subject, but as I start my journey in life coaching with spiritual life coaching, um, became an ordained minister, I study and mediumship in Brazil. I work helping people through their path into find the connection um, with what is that they want, but they cannot find the words to describe. So it's, it's tricky. Spirituality it's different than religion. You know we. I may have grown with some sort of religion, um, either Christianity, um, Islamism, uh, Buddhism, uh, Judaism. There's so many out there, and within them, we find different schools of thoughts, sects, and um, and churches. So religion becomes more of an institution than what spirituality means. And I know a lot of people, even more in the millennial generation, that embrace this side of like, I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious. And it's very interesting to me to, to observe that. Um, I identify myself as pagan, mostly because paganism means um, to abide to religion religious practices that do not fit in the mainstream. That's where the word pagan comes. It's not about worshipping a cer certain type of deity or to you know, appropriate some sort of culture. Um, it's more about not fitting in a box um, that sometimes we don't. However, I grew up uh, in Christianity and a different type of belief system than in most places that I see here in America. So I grew up in Brazil and and I was raised in, in a religion that it didn't it wasn't called a religion, it was a doctrine called Spiritism, where we believed in in the Bible and the Gospels and the path that Jesus Christ trace and serve as a role model to all of us but from the perspective that there is such a thing as reincarnation and multiple multiple worlds um, the multiple existences and lifetimes in that everything is the evolution uh, of our soul that we are here but we have been here many times and so did Jesus Christ, so did their, uh, his disciples, so did everyone else that came before and after, and that there is life in between. So that's how I grew up with, and my understanding was just um, exploring from that perspective. Mediumship uh, was something very close to me that I started sensing since I was young and the way that that manifests to me is different than to other mediums that I know. In Brazil, however, we do have so many schools open to people to learn how to exercise their medium gifts or to be a channel um, for the universe or for spirits or for entities or other things. Um, beyond that, you have in Brazilian culture this miscellaneous mix uh, of uh, African religion 
with Catholicism, with uh, indigenous rituals that blend all together and form religions of its own. So at some point in my life, when I was in my mid-twenties, I embraced Umbanda as my religion. I was baptized and I started all my studies and trainings in that religion as well. However, when I moved to America, there was no such thing as as a Zambanda practice, even less here in Pensacola. And here I practice Ifa, which is uh, an originator of Umbanda, but more core and rooted in the African traditions. So I don't fit in the mainstream. My ideas don't fit in the mainstream, but it doesn't fit in any extremes either. So to me, to embrace the spirituality was a much more important milestone than abiding to religious practices. And thinking about religion, and even where that word comes from though, it's interesting how we distort it to the point where we are today. Because for many, religion becomes, like I say, an institution. and uh, becomes the church that you go to. But from the root, in the Latin word, religere, it means to bind. Um, in other uh, translations that can go to relig religionis, and it means um, to belong to a cult, to link. And so when you put those things together, it makes sense that religion as an institution is this group of people, this social gathering, to then bind ourselves with a divinity, with a belief in, in something um, higher than us, let's say. But we don't need religion to have that link to have that connection and that's what i think that spirituality is all about to be a spiritual person you don't need to even believe that there is a god they don't need to believe that there is a higher power because you're just connected with something greater so you can be agnostic or you can be uh, an atheist and still be a spiritual person because you're just connected with that spark within you or even like with a spark that is present in everything else and from the worlds of, of Carl Sagan is like we're all made of stardust and that that's that's an atheist saying something that to me is profoundly spiritual so let's talk about the roots of spirituality and the word spirit that comes from, the, from this root of essence, of breath. It is uh, the reflection of the soul, right? So to be spiritual is to be connected with the essence, to be connected with yourself in that most uh, essential level, vital. Be connected with your breath. With every second and every word that you say has purpose and meaning. And then we can diverge in something more complex as magic, where literally every word is a spell of a different with a different power. Right? And the first at first was the spoken word that gave life to everything. And by saying that, we're talking about the breath of life. The pranayama. I just think it's fascinating how all the, all the different cultures, they converge in similar ways. Regardless of religion, that we can connect with this essence and connect with the sense, essence of others and respect that their essence is not the same as ours and learn from it. So to live a true spiritual life, it is to live in true of that essence, regardless of religion. 
And that religion has a place where we can commune, where we can congregate, where we can converse and exchange these ideas. But that does not need to be a cult, does not need to be a church, does not need to be a space, a physical space. It's a mental space. So that's my, <laughs> that's my mind for today. And I'm curious about your thoughts, your thoughts in spirituality, your thoughts about religion, your experience with spirituality and religion, because I only have one perspective and it's not necessarily the same perspective that you have. It's not even the same perspective that I'm seeing right now because the camera is what I'm seeing right now. So everything is just, you know, a reflection of the experience that we have. And this is my reflection. So I want you to know about yours. I want to understand what are you looking for when you look for religion? What are you looking for when you're looking for spiritual teachings? To work as a spiritual life coach is one of the most interesting and rewarding things because to me, it's not about teaching anyone about anything, but just about watching this flourishing that comes from the sparks and the insights that people can have when they're giving time and permission to just be the light that they are. So be the light that you are. And I want to see the light and I want to learn about that light. So share with me, what are your thoughts about religion and spirituality? Where those things fit in your life? And how do you see from here on how, how important is this aspect of your life in these times that we are living right now? So thank you for joining me and I see you next week.